In today's video, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Lenovo Yoga Duet 7i model. This is the US version that hit the United States late 2020. Um, doing this review, uh, January 2021, I had this unit for about uh, um, two weeks and three days. And I should also know that this is not a sponsored video. And I purchased this unit on my own. Uh, for me, in my case, I am actually upgrading this unit from the Surface Pro, the original model. Yes, the original model. It's still out there. Uh, for me, it was working great for all of these years. But as uh, I was looking at um, upgrading uh, it at some point, I started looking at the actual the Surface Pro 7 currently. But the value difference of what we have with Lenovo and the things that are with the Surface 7 or things that are not with the Surface 7, like the keyboard, pen, etc., uh, I wanted to give this Lenovo a try. This is my first Lenovo product. So let's see how that goes. At the end, is it a Microsoft Surface killer? Not necessarily, but is it a good competitor? I think so. The display, it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. For me, I think it works very well. My personal preference is 16 by 9, which is kind of hard to get nowadays in a tablet, uh, kind of a detachable keyboard configuration. But 16 by 10 at the end was not too bad. I'm not... Uh, keen too much on the two by three aspect ratios that are out there. Um, the black bars when you're watching videos do kind of uh, get in the way, but 16 by 10 and this display, it's I did not find it to be an issue or a distraction. The display contrast ratio is good enough that it did not bother me. Uh, the quality of the display seems to be, uh, it, it is a 2K display, not 4K display, but given the price, no complaints there. Um, this display is rated at 450 nits, meaning that you should be able to do some work with it outdoors. Outdoors in the shade, no issues. Outdoors in the sun well kind of maybe uh, so you'll have to make sure that the angle is good uh, you can do some things with it if you need to probably not the preferred way to be using it outdoors because there is glare on it and at certain angles it will get in the way so if you position the laptop correctly or this tablet correctly it should not be a significant issue but you would not want to be working on it outdoors all the time. I don't think that's going to be the right solution for that. Uh, the display does support streaming HDR video functionalities on videos that uh, have that capability. On the right side we have a USB-C port, we have the volume control and the power button as well as the right speaker. On the left we have the left speaker, we have a slot for the micro SD card that is removable, we have the audio jack for the headphones and then we have two USB-C ports. The bottom one is the charging one. On the top we do have the vents for cooling of the tablet and we also have the Dolby Audio logo indicating that we should have Dolby sound quality. Well, if it meant for quality then um, I think they kind of missed the boat. The speakers are there. They are loud enough, however their quality is still leaving much to be desired. They're just a bit tiny and given the laptop uh, or tablet configuration maybe that's why. I'll give you guys a quick sample. I know it's not a fair comparison, but I'll give you the sound from the tablet versus desktop speakers so you can hear the difference. It's so for the best I will show you the way It's not how it's done At least not for me Cause I need my freedom Like I need my air the keyboard is actually very nice and is of good quality, uh, good key travel, uh, good high quality keyboard and uh, no issues with trying to adjust to it. do get a very nice high quality trackpad and uh, the options and customizations that we can do with it are also very nice. Uh, for me it is a huge upgrade from the Surface original trackpad which was very poor so for me it is a, actually a huge upgrade. And uh, the customizations that we can do between two, three or four fingers and what they will do when you you either um, slide it or uh, tap it, uh, we are able to make those customization on the settings app for the trackpad. The uh, cool thing about this uh, keyboard is that it has a Bluetooth mode so you can actually detach it from the tablet and use it wirelessly via Bluetooth. So this is a cool functionality to have if you want to stand uh, your tablet in a different way and just uh, use the Bluetooth mode and you can turn it off when you don't need to do that. The aspect there is that that's why it's a little bit larger in order to have that capacity to actually have the battery in there to charge it. I do not have any metrics in terms of the actual how long does the battery last. 
fast. The keyboard snaps in fine without any issues magnetically. The keyboard does have backlighting capabilities as well, which is very nice. So the default is off and then of course there is middle and then the high backlight option so you can adjust it as needed. One thing I don't like is the sticking out of the USB-C power uh, cord, uh, but one alternative that I did come up with is use the magnetic uh, option. So it has a adapter converter that I bought separately and this piece sticks uh, remains in the tablet, but it is small. And then the other uh, connector goes to the regular USB-C power cable and then you're able to connect it magnetically, which is really cool. I like that. So you can connect it, disconnect it, um, and then you don't have this USB-C protruding out of the side. Uh, that is not a cheap alternative. They do cost a bit, uh, but I kind of got spoiled by having that ability with uh, the previous version of the Surface. The kickstand is good and can be positioned in almost any angle that you may like and can also be tilted uh, so low that I think most folks should be able to find a position that works for them the best. The pen is good from limited experience that I have with it. The one that comes with this unit is e collar, which is charged via USB-C port and can be used uh, as is or also via Bluetooth mode. Since I'm not an artist who uses the pen for drawing and my drawing skills are clearly lacking, I would not be able to provide accurate feedback on the pen's quality compared to others. However, I did basic testing with it in several applications, including Microsoft Paint 3D, and the only issue that I have seen uh, personally is when using very large brush sizes and then doing fast movements. In those cases, there will be a noticeable delay, but otherwise, I did not find any issues with it. To insert a microSD card, you do need to remove the tray. No removal tool was provided in my box, but I did have one for my Samsung phone that I was able to use and remove the tray and insert the microSD card. I do wish that it had a spring push to load mechanism like my Surface does. However, that is not an option in this case. The system is fast to boot and to wake it up from sleep is pretty quick as well. From hibernation, however, it will take just a few seconds longer, but nothing unreasonable. I'm not a big fan of their boot up logo. I think someone spent a little bit too much time in Photoshop in trying to come up with it. Doing heavy CPU testing, like with Prime MD5, for example, I did find thermal throttling take effect 30 to 40 seconds into the test. However, changing both of the power options in Windows to performance level, as well as Lenovo's own cooling setting into performance mode, uh, that results in full use of the CPU. And of course, the fans do then uh, start working and cooling uh, sooner. For the regular and the normal day-to-day -day use, I have no issues in keeping it in balanced mode, but if one is expecting to do some heavy performance work, then of course changing those settings ahead of time would allow for faster uh, completion of the project. While Surface's back of the keyboard is using this Alcantara kind of style fabric on the Lenovo's ones, they are different. It is kind of heavy duty, hard fabric, but I'm not expecting any issues with that either. Out of the box, we did have 437 gigabytes available of free space before starting all of our Windows updates. We do have two cameras and then one IR camera with a unit. Front facing camera is five megapixels and the rear facing camera is also five megapixels. Not the greatest cameras out there, but they will be sufficient for basic meetings. We do get a 30 day subscriptions to the McAfee software. However, their daily pop-ups and annoyances about actually making a purchase for the subscription was too annoying and I decided to uninstall the McAfee virus and actually install a real legitimate product instead. And we do get Intel Wi-Fi 6 version, which supports the AX protocol. Of course, uh, the moment I do not have an AX router, so I'm using it on the AC protocol. However, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is backwards compatible, so once I do upgrade my router, I'll be able to take advantage of the Wi-Fi 6 AX capabilities. We do get a high quality Samsung uh, M.2 drive and getting good results with Crystal Disk Mark, good read and good write results per specifications. So overall, I do like the quality of what we have here, and it is a good value of what we have and what Lenovo is able to provide, and having the pen and keyboard included in the package is awesome without having to make it as a separate purchasable item. I feel like we have a good configuration with the 10th gen Intel CPU, uh, the i7 CPU, and the fast uh, 512 gigabyte solid state uh, drive is awesome. I don't know why Microsoft is still starting their surfaces at 128 gigabytes. That is simply not enough. It's 2021 and Windows operating systems are just uh, not at the point where you can 
do everything with 128 gigabytes of space in my opinion. I am glad that Lenovo also uh, has the capability to use a micro SD card to expand uh, the storage. I just do wish that it would have been a spring loaded design instead of this tray design. However, it is what it is. Uh, the variable uh, position kickstand, uh, I like that. It is very nice and sturdy. No complaints whatsoever. Uh, with that regard. Uh, do note that there are no USB-A style ports here, only USB-C, so keep that in mind. We are going through a transitional period, USB-A is going out, so I definitely understand why Lenovo is not including it, but keep that in mind in case you have devices that need USB-A, you may need to use some adapters if you do choose to purchase this device. Uh, for me, I changed my mouse to, use, to using Bluetooth, so I do not have to use uh, dongles or adapters for the Logitech USB-A style mouse that I have. I do think that Lenovo should have probably made this i7 version with 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of 8. I think that would have been a better match. Maybe i5 with 8 gigabytes, i7 with 16. Um, 8 is sufficient to everything that I do today, but future proofing, if that's even a thing anymore, I think it would have been a better match. Um, and of course, like I mentioned earlier in the review, I do wish that the speaker's quality would have been a bit better. They're loud enough, however, uh, their quality just needs some work. I have been able to use the Adobe Sound app to make sound adjustments, uh, and I think it's better than the default settings. However, uh, the quality still has a way to go. But overall, the keyboard, the trackpad, the 13-inch uh, touchscreen display with the 10th gen uh, Intel i7 CPU, I think ma it makes it a great choice and option for the value and the things that we have. So I am happy uh, with that configuration. And it is at a much more reasonable price than what we get from Microsoft Surface. Uh, overall, I'll keep using this and hopefully it will last for many years to come. I will keep updating either the description uh, of the video or put items in the comments in case I do have any uh, significant or meaningful updates, as I do with all my other reviews. If there is anything of importance, I'll definitely make sure to include that in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have found this video helpful and beneficial. Have a great day. Bye-bye.